So, as I'm sure everyone's aware, Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. Just about everywhere I look, I see people condemning it. But it seems like most of that condemnation is instinctual, meaning that people wouldn't be able to articulate very clearly why they're condemning it. And also, when I look at Vladimir Putin, I see someone who believes that he's being distorted and misunderstood in the West. So given all that, I thought it would be a healthy intellectual exercise to take a sober look at Putin's justifications for the invasion, to see how well his arguments hold up as justifying his invasion of Ukraine. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So far, he's given his rationale in two main places. One was in an essay that was published in the summer of 2021, and the other was in a speech given on Monday, February 21st. The substance of the two are similar, and in sum, he makes three main points. Putin's first argument is that Ukraine is essentially a historical mistake. Putin begins that argument by talking about a historical commonality between Russians and Ukrainians. And I'll let Putin say it in his own words. That Ukraine is not just a neighbor, neighboring country to us. It is an inherent part of our own history, culture, spiritual space. They are our comrades, relatives, not only colleagues, friends, but also our family, people we have blood and family ties with. And he's even extended that to saying that Russians and Ukrainians were one people, a single whole. And then he continues to say that Ukraine being its own country with its own ethnic identity is a mistake. But it's not a Ukrainian mistake, it's a Russian mistake, specifically made by the Soviet Union. Now radicals and nationalists including, and first of all, in Ukraine, they take the merit of winning independence. But we can see that that's not the truth. What happened to our country was caused by the mistake done by the leadership of the Communist Party made at different stages and at different types in times in their national and economical policies. I think Putin seems hesitant to clearly state what he's getting at there, but I think it's clear enough. I think he's trying to insinuate that Ukrainian independence wasn't earned by Ukrainians, but instead it was granted by Russians, and Russia granting Ukraine its independence was a mistake. So therefore he's arguing that it should be Russia's prerogative to roll back that mistake and to take back Ukraine's independence. I pulled up a blog on international history that fact-checked Putin's claim that Ukraine and Russia have this shared harmonious history. The long story short is that they do have a shared history, but they're also somewhat separate, and their history is also marked with conflict, separatism, and tragedy. And they concluded by saying that a glance into Ukrainian history reveals that Putin's claims are based on a dangerously distorted reading of the past. But none of that's important. The only important thing here is that in 1991, Ukraine became independent. They had their own independence movement with their own declaration of independence, supported by the overwhelming majority of Ukrainian people, which was recognized as legitimate by countries around the world, including Russia. So Ukraine is its own country with its own identity. And Russia saying that allowing that was a mistake isn't relevant. Once a country becomes a sovereign country, that's it. Another country deciding later that it was a mistake to allow it doesn't change it. Putin's second argument frames Ukraine as an aggressor. To understand this argument, you have to understand a little bit about what's going on in Ukraine. Ukraine's been divided in a conflict roughly between Western Ukraine and Eastern Ukraine. Western Ukraine is more sympathetic with the West and with the Ukrainian identity. And Eastern Ukraine is more sympathetic to Russia, Russian identity, and Russian separatism. So there's been sort of a messy civil war going on between those two sides, especially since 2014. As Putin frames it, Western Ukraine and the Ukrainian government are the aggressors in this conflict, and Eastern Ukraine and Russian separatists are the victims. I think this part of Putin's speech hasn't been given very much play in the West, so I'm going to play it somewhat at length here. Population of the Crimea Peninsula made their choice to be with Russia. Ukrainian authorities have nothing to say against this. That's why they place their bets on aggression. They use cells of extremists, including the radical Islamic organizations, 
They are sending saboteurs to destroy vital infrastructure. They kidnap citizens of Russia. We have proof, we have evidence that such aggressive activities is perpetrated with the support of foreign special services. In March of 2021, Ukraine adopted new military strategy. This document almost completely aimed at confrontation with Russia. They want to drag foreign states into the conflict with our country. He also talked about arson in Odessa that killed Russian separatists and went unpunished by Ukrainian authorities, and went so far to call it a genocide that wasn't being recognized by the West. Now almost every day they are shelling settlements in Donbass. They have amassed large troops. They are using offensive unmanned vehicles and other heavy machinery, torturing people, children, women, elderly people. It doesn't stop. It doesn't cease. We see no end to it. And the so-called civilized world. And our Western colleagues proclaim themselves as the only representatives of this free world. They prefer not to notice this, as if there is nothing like this happening. There is no genocide perpetuated against 14 million people. From what I can tell, this is a very one-sided depiction of the conflict that's mixing truth with gross exaggeration. So, for example, there was arson in Odessa, and it does seem like there was negligence by the authorities there. But it's worth saying that in these messy conflicts, one side can always name grievances against the other. I'm not going to try to get to the bottom of that conflict. The reason why Putin brought it up was partly to justify his invasion of Ukraine, to protect Russian separatists from the quote-unquote aggression of the Ukrainian government. I think the only world where the argument works is if there's actually a genocide happening against Russian separatists. But I don't think the evidence is there to support that. And you have to remember that the burden of proof is on Putin. If he's the one claiming that there's a genocide happening, then it's up to him to provide evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that it is. But I think it would be putting it mildly to say that that evidence so far hasn't been provided. So even if you believe that Ukraine is the aggressor in that conflict, it still doesn't justify Russia's invasion of Ukraine. One country can't justify the invasion of another just because they believe a government is being aggressive in a civil conflict. Putin's third argument is that Russia is threatened and has a right to react. This argument centers around NATO and is about NATO's expansion towards Russian borders. Putin argues that if Ukraine were to join NATO, and if it were equipped with modern missile technology, it would then pose an existential threat to Russian security, in his words. And the travel time of the Tomahawk missiles to Moscow will be less than 35 minutes, ballistic missiles 7-8 minutes, and the hypersound offensive weapons 4-5 minutes. That's like having a knife against our throat. And he even cites international law to say that one country can't enhance its own security at the cost of the security of another country. In international law, it says the principle, there is a principle of indivisible security, which states that one country cannot enhance its security at the expense of the security of others. And then specifies that he's talking about Ukraine. And if Ukraine was to join NATO, it would serve as a direct threat to the security of Russia. He says he's been voicing these grievances to the West, but the West hasn't been taking him seriously. They've been carrying on and treating him like a dog barking at a caravan. Ignoring our protests and our warnings, they just didn't care about that. They did whatever they deemed necessary and appropriate. And I believe they plan to continue doing like that. Because they see us as a dog barking at the caravan. He says that since his warnings have been ignored, he has a right to act to protect his own security and that he plans on doing it. About principled matters, had no response from the U.S. and NATO when the level of threat for our country is becoming greater and greater. Russia has every right to take countermeasures to enhance our own security. And that's how we plan to act. So Putin feels threatened by NATO. And if Ukraine joined NATO, then that would raise that threat to an existential threat. And so far, Putin's warnings and grievances about it have been ignored. In my opinion, this is Putin's real justification for the invasion. 
if you could imagine Putin in, say, a courtroom having to defend his actions, I think this is the line that he would probably take to defend himself. So I think this third argument is the real one. And I think the other two arguments are mainly designed to garner support from people who are already sympathetic to Russia. But however good of an argument that might be, and however good of a geopolitical critique that might be, does it follow that it justifies Russia's invasion of Ukraine? And the only world where I can see the answer to that being yes would be if all other diplomatic solutions failed. Russia did make diplomatic gestures, but they claim that those gestures failed because the world wasn't taking them seriously. However true that might be, that has not been true in the day or two before the invasion. The day or two before the invasion, the entire world was paying attention to them, and leaders around the world begged him to negotiate. Putin successfully brought attention to himself and successfully brought a level of seriousness to Russian demands. It seems like the opportunity for diplomacy was there, and it seems like Russia didn't take it, and instead they invaded. So however real Russia's grievances may be about NATO, if all that's true, then it can't be said that the invasion is justified. When we're talking about the invasion of Ukraine, we're talking about a country's sovereign rights, people's rights to their own freedom, their own government, their own way of living, which is not even to mention the cost of human life or the damage it does to a country. So invading a country is a very serious thing to do, and you need a very good reason to do it. As far as I can tell, none of these reasons get us there. That's probably a conclusion that most people watching this already agree with, but hopefully hearing that hashed out helped.